In today's video, I'm gonna answer the following question. Can you make a video on what is the difference between a Knox Sand and a bus? You're not the first one asking this question. I've been receiving a lot of those type of questions lately from people that are coming from another DAW or people that are just starting up in music production. So let's go in Cubase and just demystify all those different terms that we have on other DAWs when it comes to aux send, a bus channel, an effects channel, a group channel, you know, all those different terms. So I'm gonna show you the difference between an aux send and a bus channel in Cubase world. Hey, what's up my friends? Chris Elim here from Mixdown Online. Before we start, I'm promoting the Ultimate Cubase Mixing Masterclass, which is my latest course on mixing in Cubase. So check it out and take advantage of the special discount that I have this week only. Link is down below. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and talk about aux channels, buses, and so on. Now, when we're talking about a bus in the general term, we are talking about a path, a pathway that will go from point A to point B. In Cubase world, if we go and open the audio connections window and click on input or output, you will see the add bus tab on the top left. And that will add a link, a pathway between the audio interface and Cubase. Okay, so let me give you an example. I'm gonna click on add bus and I'm gonna call this one bus one. You can name that anything, input one, mic one, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna call it bus one and click on add bus. Now I'm gonna select on the device port section, I'm gonna have all of my uh, inputs out of my audio interface. So this is the link, okay? The bus is actually um, giving me the link, all the channels available on my audio interface so I can link those inputs into Cubase on a regular audio channel. I'm gonna go and select mic one. My input bus, which is called bus one, is gonna be linked to the first preamp of my audio interface. If I go then on an audio channel, let's go with this one. And if I click on input routing, I'm gonna see bus one. And there you go. Now my audio track is routed into the first uh, preamp of my audio interface. So this is basically what a bus is as far as input buses goes. It's the link between the audio interface and Cubase. We have the same thing for the outputs. Okay, we can add different buses, output buses and the same is gonna apply, you know, so everything's gonna apply the same. Now, by default, I have the master bus, but I can add, you know, bus out. Let's create a second output. Same will apply for outputs. Okay, so if I click on outputs, I click on add bus. Now, let me bring this one stereo and let's call this one bus out. One, click on add bus and same thing here. I'm gonna have access to all the outputs available out of my audio interface. And if we open the mix console on the left side of the mix console, we have our two buses that we have listed on the audio connection. So we have uh, right here, we have the stereo in, which is, was there by default, and the bus one input bus that I created earlier. So those are listed straight as an input bus. If you don't see those input channels, just click on top and click on channel type filter and you will have the list of all the available channels and just click on input channels. Okay, so every time you create a bus, an input bus, it will create an input channel. And same when creating an output bus, it's gonna create an output channel. So those are what we called a bus pathway <laughs> in Cubase. In Pro Tools, for example, if you're coming from Pro Tools, um, they're gonna call that a path, okay? In I.O. setup, you will see the path, which is gonna be the link between the audio interface and Pro Tools in this case, so they call that a path. A bus in Pro Tools is gonna be a bit different than what we have here in Cubase. So the terminology between Pro Tools and Cubase is different as far as the input path or input buses goes. And that's the same for most DAWs. But they will all do the same thing, okay? They just use different terms. So now when we are talking about a bus channel, okay? So this is a term that is used a lot in the uh, in the music production world. It's, it's a kind of a general term um, that works well to group a bunch of channels together into one single channel. And they are gonna call that a bus channel. In Cubase world, we call that a group channel. It's the same 
thing. So for us in Cubase to create a bus channel, what we need to do is to just create a group channel track. That's it. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I have some drums right here. So I'm going to select all of my drums channels and I'm going to click on add track and then I'm going to see group. So this is what I want to select. But since I selected more than one channel, I can just click on group channel to selected channels. And this is super practical. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to get this add track group channel window where I'm going to select the channel configuration from stereo mono and so on. But I'm going to keep it as it is right now. Um, let's call this one drum bus. Click on add track. And you probably heard me say that term before when I talk about an instrument bus or my stereo bus or the drum bus. This is what I'm talking about. I'm actually using the general term that everybody is using. I can use the term group as in the drum group or my mix group, which doesn't sound right to me. You know? So I'm used to using the word bus. So this is what I'm referring to when I talk about a channeled bus or a drum bus, a mix bus, and so on. So it's basically a group channel. Channel. Okay, so now what that means, okay, if you're new to Cubase, you don't know what that means. It just means that all the channels I selected, the output of those channels are going straight into the input of this bus. And this is done under the hood. It's done automatically opposed to a DAW like Pro Tools or Logic, I think, where you need to set up the pathway. And this is why they call that pathway a bus, which is the link between the audio channel and the aux channel in Pro Tools world. But in Cubase, everything is done under the hood. It's done automatically. It makes our life easier. And this is something I like a lot about Cubase. If I look at my kick drum channel, the output of that channel is now going into drum bus, which is this one. And this one is going to my master output. Okay, very simple. Now, when we're talking about the Nox Send channel, we're talking about an effects channel track. Now, the main goal of working with an effects channel track is not to send the full signal of an audio channel into this effects channel track, but just a partial signal in parallel. All right, so let's take, for example, this uh, audio channel and uh, I'm going to right click, click on add track. And again, I'm going to click on effects channel to selected channel. That is this one. And um, I'm going to choose my effect. I can load the effect I want to work on right away. Configuration, I'm going to leave that stereo and the output is going to the master. I'm going to name this one Voc Verb. There you go. And click on add track. Let me bring these bigger. Now, if we look at the uh, the vocal channel, let's look at the output of that channel. There you go. It goes straight into the master output. No change there. Uh, but we have the send right here. Now we see that the vocal channel is sending a signal of the vocal into this FX channel track. And again, everything is done internally, automatically in Cubase opposed to a software like Pro Tools where you need to make the link with buses, uh, you know, manually. So this is essentially what it does. You're just sending a partial signal to that channel that you can blend with the original channel. So usually uh, we use those, those channels for reverbs, delays, all those types of effect, okay? And there you go, it's right here. So I'm gonna just bring that up and down. So that's the vocal. And that is the aux channel right here, or, you know, the effects channel track. Now, what is a bit confusing for people that are coming from Pro Tools or from Logic, uh, where they use like buses to link those channels up, um, is that we use two channels, two different channels uh, for that purpose. We use a group channel to group a bunch of channels together, and we use a, uh, an effects channel track as a parallel channel for reverb, delay, and so on. In Pro Tools, for example, they will only use one channel that is called a Nox channel. That will serve as a, uh, a bus channel and a Nox send channel. So why do in Cubase we have two channels, two different channels, a group and an effects channel? We could only have one like in Pro Tools. And yes, that would work perfectly because 
they are essentially the same thing in reality, you know. Uh, but in the practical sense, they're not. Uh, so they are, as far as routing goes, you can actually do everything the same, you know, um, as far as routing goes. So I can take my um, my FX channel track and send a signal to another FX channel track. So routing-wise, you know, you can do whatever you want. Same here, you know, I can send the signal from that group channel track to an FX channel. I can have, I can add some inserts and so on. So routing wise, they're basically the same in Cubase Pro. Limitations might occur in lower versions of Cubase, uh, but for the Pro version, they are basically the same. Now, the main difference is the way um, they're gonna behave when creating a track. And this is the more practical way. And that's something that I like about the way they work. Like I showed you before, when you create a group channel, let's create one for those vocal channels, including the, uh, the effects channel track. I can just right click, click on add track and click on group channel to selected channels. And right away, routing is gonna be done internally and also on each individual channels. That's it, you know in a very, very fast way, which is very cool. So let's create this one and there you go. Now, the output of all of those channels, if we go straight on the mix console, they're all going into that group channel. And same if I take these two channels and I wanna create an effects channel track, I can just right click and click on add effects channel to selected channels and there you go that simple and as you can see all the sands are set up and ready to go so this is the main difference between those two channels is just the way you can create them everything can be already routed in a very fast way but in reality if you only wanted to use group channels for effects for you know for everything you know grouping tracks together or use a group channel as a nox send channel you know uh, to manage uh, reverbs delays and stuff you could you know, nothing stops you because in reality, the group channel will be able to do everything the FX channel does and vice versa. And again, I'm talking about Cubase Pro. I'm not sure about the other versions. So on my end, I keep things simple. I use it as they are meant to be used. So group channels together, a bunch of channels together and FX channel track to manage parallel processing like reverb, delay, and so on. All right, my friends, I hope that wasn't too confusing and I was able to clear that up. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. And don't forget to share, to like if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe to the channel by clicking that notification bell. Also, if you're new here on the channel. Until next time, take care and see you.